As 3D artists, we all know how incredibly hard it can be to transfer your ideas and render them to the highest quality possible. The struggle to match the quality that your imagination has placed, its journey of creating, sacrificing self-doubt and inspiration. That roller coaster of emotions is always worth it when it gets to the end of the road, but sometimes it's hard to get there. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of my favorite tips and shortcuts to creating high quality renders to hopefully help you improve your workflow and to make better quality 3D renders. All creative projects start with inspiration. I would say to never place a limit on what can inspire you. Let the world around you give ideas, let movies inspire your camera angles, let stories motivate you to create something epic. And I personally like to merge mediums and blend them into one. For example, today we're going to be merging the day after tomorrow and a piece of concept art by Max Hugo. How I do this is by extracting keywords such as snow biome, apocalypse, characters, cars, moody and atmospheric. That way when I go to look for motivation elsewhere, I know exactly what I'm looking for. Let's start by opening the Unreal 5 engine. Let's select the basic template. If you would like an in-depth look at how to navigate the entire Unreal 5 workspace, I will attach this video in the description below. But for now, I will just quickly run over the basics and some extra hidden tips for making the experience a little smoother. To navigate the viewport, right click and use WASD to move around your scene. Q and E allows you to move up or down and the camera slider at the top right of your screen controls camera sensitivity and this is very useful when it comes to navigating those tight spaces and moving smaller objects around your characters. Control spacebar will bring up your content browser. W, E and R will switch between navigate, rotation and scale and lastly F will snap your camera to whichever 3D object you have selected just in case you get a little lost in the viewport. If you are working off a subpar computer rig, you can go into the settings and lower your render viewport to something that's a little less intensive. That way you can navigate and work in a much smoother environment. Just make sure to reset this when it comes to rendering out your work. I will be using the free asset pack provided by the Kitpatch 3D for the Mission to Minerva project. If you would like to use your own assets and characters, that is perfectly fine. For our snow biome, I will be using the assets found within the Quixel Bridge environment package. Everything from rocks, materials and decals can all be downloaded and added to your project from there. So if you would like to follow along, you can. On my first session, I want to get roughly two thirds of my project laid out. I'll have the camera created, a basic light setup and height fog. We will come back to these and look at them in a little more depth, so let's put a pin in that for now. As we stand right now, I'm only focused on composition, the general layout of my scene. That way, when I take a break and if an idea surfaces, I can change things super fast. For this render, we will be using the long shot. The long shot aims to achieve the same goal as the extreme shot. However, it is a little more personal. The long shot is great for placing your character and audience into a scene when they can both share the experience. Using the long shot, keeping your subject in plain view as they explore the surroundings. This will establish the scene for your audience, giving them a better idea of how they fit into that world. A great camera focal length to achieve this would be a 25mm lens, and then you should break down your scene into three sections, foreground, midground, and background. For our render, we will break up our foreground with a snowed in rover. We will then place our character in the midground, and then create scale by having large items in the background. That way we can use depth of field to narrow in on our characters along the foreground and the background to make him shine. If you would like a full cheat sheet of camera angles and rules of thumbs for making films, I have written a small ebook which you can find in the description of this video. It's the booklet that I wish I had access to when starting out, so hopefully this helps. Once we hit our 80% mark, it's time to slowly add details to these key elements. Nature generally plays by set of rules when she's designing her environments. Large land masses are slowly broken down by the elements, forever creating smaller and smaller objects that then continue to break down. So, if you would like to have a large pile of snow, be sure to add small pieces of debris, maybe some vegetation, to help you get more realistic results. To achieve the best result, I would recommend working from references, even something simple like a piece of snow photography. It doesn't matter if it's related to your work or your theme, it's just best to work from some kind of real life reference. In time, you will build up all the small details that will add realism to your environments. Now that our scene is set, it's time to solidify the mood for our viewer. As everything is snowed in, 
It might be cool to have our characters working their way through a thick snowstorm. So let's start by adding a directional light, a height fog, a skylight, and lastly a post-processing volume. Let's turn everything off and work down through the best settings. First select your post-processing and type in bind. This will ensure the post-processing is being applied to the entire scene rather than one small selected pocket. Next type in exposure and set the min and max to 0.5 and 1. You can adjust your exposure to your liking. Next let's select our skylight. We want to enable the SLS cube map. This way we can use the HDRIs that are inbuilt within Unreal 5. For me the daylight preset worked best. I have also set this to a really small setting of 0.15 as I want to simulate a lot of light being lost to the overcast thick storm above. To simulate that thick atmosphere we're going to use a height fog. These are the settings which I used. Last a dynamic light to help highlight our subjects and I've used really small inputs again and here's a list of the settings. As we will be rendering out a simple still image all we need to do is render out a high quality screenshot. The higher you set the multiplier the higher the quality of your image. I like to set it to 4 which will render out a 4k image. Just remember to set your image quality back to cinematic or high quality for the best result. Within Affinity Photo we will be adding the final spice to our image. We will learn how to color correct, adjust shadows and highlights while finally adding extra effects which would take more time and effort within Unreal 5. Now while I am using Affinity Photo you can use Photoshop, Lightroom or GIMP all the techniques mentioned will apply to any kind of composition software. Let's start by adding our render plate. We never want to work off this layer but rather develop on top of it with many layers. So let's start by adding a levels adjustment to tweak the shadows and highlights. Next add the curves adjustment. We're just going to make a very simple S curve by placing a point here and here. Then we can pull up the blacks to get a faded film look while also flattening our highlights. It's a very easy way for leveling on your image. Brightness and contrast will allow us to tweak the overall exposure and shadows. And lastly, a soft proof to even everything out, giving us a nice faded film look. Our render however is still looking a little flat, so now it's time to add the final spice. Start by adding a snow overlay and setting the blend mode to screen to remove the black. I'll then add some fog. I will then take a soft airbrush with a 50% opacity create a new layer and paint a light color overlay to dampen the render. Now you just simply continue and add little pieces of detail that help bring your image to life. Get creative and don't stop until you get the image you desire. In time and with many revisions this is our final render. If you've made it this far thank you very much for watching. If you think you can handle some more advanced Unreal tips, I would recommend you check out this video here, where I will walk you through my entire pipeline for making Unreal cinematics. That way you can apply what you've learned today into a more advanced project. So check that out, I shall see you there.